There's few weapons more instantly recognizable than the Uzi submachine gun, but even the most devout Uzi fans may be surprised by these facts you might not know about the IMI Uzi. Number 20. A Weapon of Necessity In 1948, Israel declared itself a country and immediately prompted an invasion by its Arab neighbors. At the time, Israel's military was largely a group of ragtag militias loosely organized together into a standing army. With just 200 machine guns, 10,000 rifles, and 3,600 submachine guns, all of them World War II leftovers, Israel gained victory over the Arab assault. As the Israel Defense Forces became a professional military force, it required standardization and new equipment. In 1948, its weapons consisted of a hodgepodge of surplus Axis equipment, British small arms, and random civilian rifles and shotguns. But as a new nation with very troubled international relations, Israel could not easily acquire weapons to standardize its forces. So Israel turned inwards to its highly educated citizenship to look for solutions. Thus, the Uzi was born out of desperation and necessity. Number 19. A weapon by soldiers for soldiers. In 1952, Uzi al-Gal patented his new machine gun design, a short and compact weapon that featured high rates of fire and was exceptional for use in urban fighting. Inspired by the difficulties faced in the often urban fighting of Israel's first war, the Uzi was meant to allow soldiers to shoot and maneuver comfortably in tight quarters. The weapon featured a firing rate of 600 rounds a minute, a magazine that could hold either 25 or 32 rounds, a collapsible metal stock that could increase accuracy and allow for ease of use in tight quarters though the weapon still topped out at a maximum range of 200 yards. Number 18. Easy to use, easy to produce Compared to contemporary weapons, the Uzi featured very few moving parts, making it extremely reliable and easy to clean or fix in the field. More importantly though, the weapon was made of stamped parts, which made it easy to manufacture for a young Israel with practically no domestic arms industry to speak of. The machinery required to create an Uzi was easy to operate and easy to design, perfect for a nation that desperately needed to arm itself in a hurry. It also made the Uzi a reliable weapon even in the case of war, as new factories could be easily and quickly set up for mass production. With such a large conscript force though, the Uzi was perfect for yet another reason. Number 17. Perfect for inexperienced troops The Uzi's 600 rounds a minute firing rate may be slow by machine gun standards, but its compact size and ease of use made it the perfect choice for a young army full of inexperienced conscripts. Its rate of fire allowed new shooters to put out an impressive volume of suppressive fire, and with three safety mechanisms, a manual lever safety, a grip safety, and a bolt safety, the weapon was easy and safe to train with. Number 16. It was never standard issue The tie between the Uzi and the IDF is so close that most people assume the Uzi was the standard issue weapon for the Israeli Defense Forces upon its adoption in the mid-1950s. However, the weapon was never widely adopted, as its relatively short range made it extremely unsuitable for use on the large swaths of open desert that Israel would fight most of its wars on. Instead, the IDF carried the Belgian FN FAL rifle, but the Uzi would be very popular amongst other segments of the IDF military. Number 15. The right weapon for the right job While its short range and lack of long-range accuracy made it a poor choice for line and file infantry, the Uzi immediately found a home amongst segments of the IDF, which faced more specialized fighting conditions. Its well-balanced design, lightweight, small size, and ferocious volume of fire was perfect for Israeli special forces, who often found themselves fighting in close quarters. Israeli paratroopers also adopted the Uzi thanks to its low weight and small size. Similarly, tank and armored vehicle crews were issued Uzis, as as if their vehicles were ever disabled and they were forced to fight outside of them, odds were strong that they were already in very close contact with the enemy. The Uzi would almost immediately help Israel achieve battlefield victory. Number 14. Baptism by Fire Few weapons have met with an immediate baptism by fire the way the Uzi did. In 1954, the IDF put its first orders for the Uzi, and two years later, the weapon would see action in the Suez Crisis. In 1956, Egypt nationalized the Suez Canal Company, which stripped the British and French of control of the Suez Canal and placed it in Egyptian control. As one of the world's most important waterways, not only was control of the canal lucrative for the British and French, but also of great great strategic importance. Secretly, Britain and France conspired with Israel to regain control, and Israel soon invaded the Sinai Peninsula. Shortly after, British and French forces joined in the assault before being stopped by international pressure from both the United States and the USSR. The Uzi first saw action as Israeli paratroopers assaulted the Mitla Pass in the Sinai. Facing off against the Sudanese and Egyptian forces dug into trenches and caves, the lightweight and compact Uzi allowed Israeli troops to readily outgun and outmaneuver the defenders, helping the IDF achieve victory. As the war expanded, the 
Uzi would also see surface in the West Bank and Golan Heights. Number 13, the beginning of the end. It wouldn't be long, however, before the Uzi began to meet its match. Thanks to the proliferation of the world's most famous assault rifle, the AK-47, the Uzi was gradually phased out of service. With Israel's neighbors arming themselves with AK variants, the Uzi was soon outgunned. The AK featured a comparable rate of fire, superior range, and a larger rifle caliber round, while the Uzi was still limited to a 200-yard range with a pistol caliber round. Slowly, the IDF began to transition to the M16 and the Galil assault rifle, though the Uzi remained popular with special forces units, which often operated at very close ranges. Number 12. Global Appeal Even as the Uzi lost favor with the IDF, the weapon exploded in popularity around the world. Its compact size and high rate of fire combined with ease of manufacturing, the wide availability of 9mm ammunition, and low cost all served to make it extremely popular with smaller militaries and criminal groups. In Africa, the Uzi became a mainstay amongst various armies and militias, who often used it against each other. It also made its way across the Atlantic to trouble spots in Central and South America. In the US, the Uzi became the new Tommy gun, with criminal gangs popularizing it in culture through widespread use. The Uzi would even help change American minds on law enforcement. Number 11. It even helped change U.S. police policy. The proliferation of Uzis and similar firearms throughout the criminal networks of the United States quickly led to the American police forces being woefully outmatched by criminal firepower. This led to the upgrading of many Americans' police service weapons, many of which were still using revolvers. As a crime wave overtook the U.S., fueled in part by the Uzi, American police departments began to set up specialized heavy-armed squads to deal with the worst of the worst violent criminals, birthing modern SWAT forces. Number 10. Reluctantly World Famous Uziel Gal might have developed one of the most iconic firearms in all of human history, but he would have liked it better if his name had been left out of it. Upon adoption of the weapon, Israel decided to name the weapon after him, shortening it to Uzi. However, Uziel opposed the decision vehemently. Israel, a young nation in need of heroes, ignored his opposition and went ahead with the naming anyway. Number 9. An Award-Winning Design Ask the IDF soldiers tasked with fighting in the trenches and caves of the Sinai, and the Uzi deserved every accolade it received. Other than being praised for its invention by the troops, though, in 1958, Uziel Gal became the first person to receive the Israel Security Award, given in honor of his work on the Uzi. Easy to use, reliable, and easy to manufacture, the Uzi was a desperately needed lifeline for Israel in its early history until it could develop a native arms industry and negotiate internationally for weapons. In a very real sense, Gal might have helped ensure the independence of his country with his submachine gun. But not all of Uziel's inventions would be met with such accolades, however. Number 8. The Uzi Upgrade In 1975, Gaul retired from the IDF, and shortly thereafter moved to the United States so his daughter, suffering from brain damage, could receive better medical care. While in the US, Gaul continued his work as a gun designer, this time working with the manufacturer Sturm Ruger & Co. His talents would lead to the creation of the MP9 submachine gun, a modernized version of the Uzi, whose rights Sturm Ruger & Co. had bought. The MP9, however, would be poorly received. Number 7. A Troubled Big Brother The MP9 was meant to be a direct upgrade from the Uzi and thus used modern materials which further reduced its weight to an impressive 5.94 pounds when unloaded. Its target customers would be American government agents who had a need for close quarters weapons with a high rate of fire and good reliability. The development of polymer materials helped reduce the weight, and Gaul's focus on simplicity made the weapon extremely reliable. Unfortunately, the weapon never gained the attention of government agencies and only 1,500 were ever produced, making them a rare item for a modern gun collector. The MP9 would become a commercial failure and Ruger would never again develop a submachine gun. Number 6. Still Globally Popular Despite being relegated to reserve forces by the IDF, the Uzi remains globally popular, with 90 countries around the world still using the weapon in some capacity. The weapon was produced under license in Belgium and Zimbabwe, though it was also illegally copied in China and Croatia. Some early Uzi features might have been surprising, though. Number 5. Wood over Metal Despite the collapsible metal stock being part of the iconic imagery of the Uzi, the first Uzis featured a collapsible wooden stock. With Israel being low on both industry and strategic resources, and needing to get weapons into the hands of soldiers quickly, wood was a cheap and fast alternative to metal stocks, though eventually they would be phased out in preference of a more durable, lightweight metal stock. Number 4. Small, smaller, and smaller yet With stock extended, the Uzi reaches 25 inches in length, or 17 and a half with stock collapsed, a small weapon with a big impact. Even smaller variants of the Uzi were created. The Mini Uzi was first introduced in 1980 and is only 24 inches or 14 inches with stock collapsed. 
meters. The Mini Uzi, however, halves its effective range to 100 meters, but makes up for this with an impressive 950 rounds per minute firing rate. If that's not small enough, though, the Micro Uzi would enter service in 1986. This tiny terror would reach just 19.1 inches in length, or 11.1 inches with the stock collapsed. Weighing in at just 3.3 pounds, this midget mauler has a firing rate of a whopping 1,200 rounds a minute. Number 3. It's even a pistol. The Uzi pistol lacks the fully automatic firing mode of the Uzi, but nonetheless is a popular choice for individuals in need of a high-capacity pistol for close-quarters defense. Now discontinued in most places, the Uzi pistol featured a 20, 25, or even 32-round magazine. Two million Uzi Pro pistols were manufactured, and can be a prized collector's item. For American fans of the Uzi, though, we have bad news. Number 2. Illegal for almost 50 years. The Uzi is the most iconic for its fully automatic firing mode, but if you're an American gun collector, it's not just illegal to possess a fully auto Uzi, but difficult to even find an authentic fully auto Uzi. In 1968, the sale of fully automatic Uzis was made illegal with the 1968 Gun Control Act, a desperate measure to curb rising gun violence. This makes Uzis imported before 1968 extremely rare and valuable for gun collectors. Number 1. A Fading Legend While Chinese knockoffs produced illegally for decades can often Often be found in domestic and national markets, original pre-1968 IMI Uzis are a dying breed. For American gun collectors, it's believed that less than 100 original fully automatic Uzis remain in the country. Thanks to their rugged design and ease of maintenance, though, these iconic weapons will continue to be reliable for decades to come if taken care of. Now go watch Evolution of the AK-47 Rifle, or click this other video instead. This other video instead.